Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very pleased to greet you today, the first day of the Blonde Children's Book Fair, online edition 2021. We're still online, but nonetheless, still working across the world to bring children and books together. We have lots to share with you today, so without further ado, I will introduce the IBI president, Min Jo Jang, to open this press conference from Beijing. Min Jo. Dear IBI friends, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second time that we have had to meet online for the EV press conference. I deeply regret that we still cannot meet to talk, walk, and laugh with each other at the Bologna Children's Book Fair. When Jalila Ban founded EV 68 years ago, the world was very difficult. She established EV in an effort to promote international understanding through children's books. This became the mission of EV, and since then, EB members have been working tirelessly to keep these ideas alive. And of course, this has been the huge challenge that we have had to meet for the last 18 months. Children everywhere have suffered and in many places are still suffering. Not only from the loss of loved ones due to the virus, but they have lost their access not only to their schools, their education, to books, but also to their wider families. The members of EB national sections have risen to these particular challenges by organizing events for children online. These could be storytelling hours or activity workshops. Others have given online training for reading promoters or handicraft training for grandparents who are taking on more childcare roles. Authors and illustrators are finding it hard to make ends meet as school and community events are cancelled. Book tours are a thing of the past. EB stands by all authors and illustrators for children. Without them, our world would be a much greater place. So we urge you all to support your local authors and illustrators so that they can continue to bring joy and understanding to children everywhere. Despite all the difficulties caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, EB has continued to work with its international programs and activities, supporting our members in whatever way is needed. To support EB members and projects during this time, we worked with NAMI Island to produce 10 beautiful scarves as an EB fundraising project. The 10 scarves were designed by Hans Christian Anderson Award winners who generously created and donated their designs for this project. I'd like to warmly thank everyone involved in this innovative product once again for their solidarity and practical support. Since I addressed you at the 2020 EB Bologna press conference, so much has happened. EB held its first online general assembly and we have adapted to constant Zoom meetings where we can even meet people that we could never normally meet because of the distance. EV Lebanon has done amazing work in refurbishing school libraries following the enormous blast on 4th August last year that caused so much damage in Beirut. Sadly, we are again appealing for funds to support EV Palestine as they work to reopen the EV libraries in Gaza. We will share all news of the EV products later in this presentation, and some parts are very exciting. The 37th EV World Congress with the theme The Great Big World Through Children's Books, which was postponed from 2020, is going to be held in Moscow on 10 to 12 September. I would like to take this opportunity to thank EV Russia for their steadfast support and hard work in making this happen during this very difficult time. We already know that they are preparing an amazing digital event that is pushing new boundaries for EB events. Please follow the latest developments that the Congress organizers will be sharing with you later in this presentation. As always, our generous sponsors are highly appreciated and without their support, we would not be able to work with so many motivated people to bring books and children together. We wish to sincerely thank Nami Island Incorporation, the Asahi Shimbun, the Shenzhen Irid Foundation, the Yamada Bee Farm, and all the individuals, companies, and organizations that have supported EB and its programs. Thank you one and all. 
On behalf of EB, I wish to thank the fair director Elena Pasoli and her hardworking team for their continuing and generous support. I urge you to visit this inspiring online edition of the book fair and enjoy the broad spectrum of events, conferences, award announcements and ceremonies, workshops, exhibitions, talks, forums, and meetings. I truly hope that we shall be back in Bologna in 2022. As we move forward, we recall the core belief that Jalal Abban had in the transformative power of reading. Her motivation still instills inspiration and thousands of EB members continue to believe in this basic tenet as they work to ensure that every child has the right to read and the possibility to become a lifelong reader. With many thanks to you all, without you, EB's work would not be possible. Thank you. Thank you, Minjo. Now I'd like you to take, to the, take you to the other side of the world, to Toronto, where Lee Turina and Bonnie Ng are eager to launch the 2021 EB Outstanding selection of books for young people with disabilities. Hi, and warm Ivy greetings. My name is Lee Tarina, and I'm one of the lead librarians for the Ivy Collection for Young People with Disabilities. Hello, my name is Bonnie Ng, and I'm the other lead librarian working with the Ivy Collection. This collection is located in Toronto Public Library, North York Central Branch, in the Children's Department. Ah, 2020. That was a hard year for all of us. It was the year we did not expect. The COVID-19 pandemic spread across the world, creating restrictions and changes that shattered our personal routines, economies, and society as we knew it. At the Ippy Collection, we tried to decide whether we should cancel the selection this year. And we said, no, no, this was the year that children needed books and stories the most. So, we postponed the deadlines. We asked that the books be submitted in electronic PDFs. The selection meetings were held by video conference. Hard copies of the print books were mailed off to the Ibi Secretariat. These adaptations made it harder for all of us, but it involved more people in the whole process, and that was a good thing. National Sections, we thank you for all your work in altering your own routines to meet our new submission guidelines and the fact that you managed to find the books. In so many cases, we know this was not easy. So we thank you. Thank you. Having changed the deadlines, books poured in from a greater number of countries. We were excited to receive 194 submissions from 31 countries in 23 languages. We have chosen 40 outstanding books from 26 countries in 21 languages. New languages this year are a book in Sinhali from Sri Lanka and a dual language book in Maori and English from New Zealand. We are pleased to present the 2021 selection of outstanding books for young people with disabilities. We often say that these 40 outstanding books are only a few examples of the amazing submissions that we received. Let's take a look at these titles. Category 1. Specialized Formats. Books using different systems and designs can help make reading accessible to everyone. Some of these specialized formats include Braille, sign language, tactile illustrations, and nonverbal communication systems. An example from this category is Planet by Marie Findelin from France. The one thing I really liked about this tactile book was how a child can build their own towers or structures and add it to the pages with the little building block pieces to create their own city. One new format that Lee and I noticed this year was the use of QR codes as additional access in books. An example of the use of the QR codes is this book, David Mission Possible by Aksanja Kumarner from Sylvania. Not only does this have Sylvanian sign language along with the story, but when you scan the QR code, 
It will show a person signing the words on each page and also the text in the book. It's great to see the use of technology being integrated in this category. Congratulations to all the outstanding examples in category one. Category two, universal access. This category highlights picture books and easy readers that are understandable to all individuals, in particular, young people with learning, intellectual, or developmental disabilities. These books are selected from mainstream children's publishing market. They are not in specialized format, and they are not meant for preschool children. You know, Bonnie and I are noticing that we are receiving a greater number of submissions in graphic formats, um, either within the text as a comic strip or graphic novels. Now, as an example from category two, I have a graphic picture book. It's called Romore, or the English title Noise, by Luca Rally, and it's from Italy. We open up with our Protagonist, here he is, quietly eating breakfast. His dad and his mom are screaming at each other across the table. We assume they're screaming, but their speech bubbles are crossed out. And in fact, this is also a silence book or a book without words. But you see the rest of the noise around and his dad is pounding on the table. The television is blaring off the wall and the cat, even the cat is crying and meowing. It's very visual. But I like this book because it makes me think of lots of questions. It makes me think about the age old debate uh, between generations about whether um, people, well, what's good music or what's terrible music and you should turn it off. What does, who decides or what decides and determines a good sound or a bad sound? Those are all questions that this brings up for me, but also at the very, very end of the book, I don't know whether our protagonist at the breakfast table is deaf or just oblivious to sound. And here he is at the end of the book playing music, punk music in front of a huge M. So it brings up a lot of mysterious things. That's just one example from the outstanding books in category two. Congratulations to all of those books. Category three, portrayal of disabilities. This section includes general books that depict people with disabilities in picture books, fiction, and nonfiction titles. An example from this category is this book from Korea. Let me introduce my special child. This book is from the perspective of 11 mothers who have a child with a disability. The stories are a mix up of the child's perspective and the mother's perspective. With each chapter having an own voice of the mother or the child, there's beautiful artwork that goes along with the stories that were done by the author's child and siblings. Another great example in this category is this book, How Lucky I Am by Lauren Schimmel from Columbia. In this book, you see a wonderful relationship between the brothers. The main character tells you why he is lucky, and one of those reasons is because of his brother, Jose. Although the book doesn't state that Jose has a visual disability explicitly, the information gathered from the text and the beautiful illustrations on each page, you come to the conclusion that he does have a visual disability and it's viewed in a positive way. Congratulations to all the outstanding examples in category three. The 40 outstanding examples are annotated in the catalog with a publisher's contact information as well as a subject index. We also have catalogs from 1997 ready for downloading. However, all of these books submitted, not just the outstanding books, are listed in the Toronto Public Library online catalog. 
They're listed by author, title, illustrator, subject, language, publishers, and by format. We feel it's very important for people all over the world to be able to research the bibliographic information of a title from anywhere. They might want to make a book list about a particular subject or to find publishers who specialize in a format or just the books from a country. Another innovation this year has been an Ibby sticker to put on outstanding book covers. This is available by writing to the Secretariat, ibby.secretariat at ibby.org. We would love to have you come to Toronto to visit and to see this amazing collection of over 4,000 books in over 40 different languages, such as Icelandic, Arabic, or Korean. And the formats, oh my! Textured illustrations from the Netherlands, handmade cloth books from volunteer sewing groups in Japan, tactile innovation from France, the creativity of these craftspeople and artists and writers is phenomenal. This collection will resonate with you. From the creators to the publishers to the national sections. For everyone involved in this process, it's always a labor of love. We would love to see you. Call ahead so that we can prepare for your visit. Our contact is ibby at tpl.ca. And please continue to help us promote the wonderful titles from this year's outstanding selection, as well as improving access to books for all young people. We'd like to leave you with a quote from a deaf dancer, Tai Li Hua. Her life is featured in the outstanding novel from China this year called The Elephant Foot Drum by Yin Jing Lang. Tai Li Hua said, disability is not deficiency. As the saying goes, the moon may be crescent or full, but one is as beautiful as the other. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you in 2023. <laughs> Thanks, Lee and Bonnie. The 2021 catalogue can be downloaded from the TPL and the IBI websites and paper copies can be ordered from the IBI Secretariat. We continue our travels to Texas, where Bookbird editor Janelle Mathis is waiting to talk to you. Janelle? Hello from Bookbird. I'm Janelle Mathis and together with Petrus Pinnell, edit this Journal of International Children's Literature. We are quite proud of the scholarship as well as the informative and critical insights around children's literature around the globe that readers find within Bookbird's pages. This is only possible through the contributions of authors, reviewers, readers, and the support of Ibi, of course. For a moment, I'd like to draw your attention to our recently published issues of 2021. An issue themed on multimodality in and around children's literature. An unthemed issue reflecting the scholarly work in many different spaces of our field, and a soon-to-be-out issue sharing many perspectives around social justice. Of course, keep your eyes open in the fall of 2021 for the issue that shares the current Hans Christian Andersen nominees and become familiar with the many excellent authors and illustrators from which the winners will be announced in 2022. We want to remind you that Bookbird is indexed by Scopus and other resources. If you are searching for a place to disseminate your scholarship, it is highly regarded in the field of children's literature. And Bookbird may well offer scholarly support for your work within its diversity of topics. Referencing this journal through citations supports Bookbird, but also supports the authors whose significant work is important to note. We also seek for each issue articles and stories from around the globe that share the activities and events around children and books, the creators of books, and other interesting insights that provide diverse perspectives and understandings. Such articles often highlight the work of IBI around the globe, as does a focused update on IBI's activities from the Secretariat. 
and each issue provides reviews of recent children's books as well as recently published professional resources. Please keep in mind that while published in English, we can support authors for whom English is not their first language and even offer translation services if needed. We wish to thank everyone who currently supports BookBird through your readership and manuscript submissions and look forward to welcoming new readers and authors. Published four times a year, subscriptions are available through Project Muse, Johns Hopkins University Press. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Now for a very special event, the launch of the new book, Bookbird, A Flight Through Time. A Flight Through Time is an attractive, accessible and informative account of how Bookbird, which started as a small bulletin, has grown into an internationally acclaimed journal. As the history of Ibi is closely tied to the history of Bookbird, this book is a great account of how Ibi has grown and been a major influence in the development of children's literature. Producing this book has been a really a labour of love for the two editors, Valerie Cochran and Evelyn Freeman, who have worked intensely for months on a pro bono basis. And I'm now honoured to invite them to tell you all about this fabulous book. And I'm happy to welcome a very special guest who is joining them in this video. My name is Joan Glazer, and I'm delighted and honored to be able to present to you a new book, Bookbird, A Flight Through Time, edited by Valerie Coughlin and Evelyn Freeman and published by Bookbird Incorporated. Bookbird is the journal of the International Board on Books for Young People, and this book traces its inception, growth, and success. It also shows the beginnings, growth, and interrelationships of the International Youth Library in Munich, the Hans Christian Andersen Awards, IBI, and Bookbird. All owe their founding to one remarkable woman, Jella Lepman. She was born into a Jewish family in Stuttgart, educated in Germany and Switzerland, and moved to England in 1936 to escape the rise of Nazism. At the end of World War II, she returned to Germany where she saw the plight of the children there, saw books as essential as food and shelter and began requesting publishers to send books for an exhibition. This led to her establishing with funds from the Rockefeller Foundation, the International Youth Library. Then in 1953, a group she organized founded the International Board on Books for Young People and the Anderson Award. And in 1957, Bookbird began, first as a quarterly bulletin. Bookbird, a journal of international children's literature, has been in publication now for over 60 years. So a flight through time really is a flight through time. It managed to stay aloft through some bumpy air. During this period, its publication location changed several times and not always without controversy. And of course, finances are always a fun topic for any journal. What one sees, however, is the dedication to an informative and quality journal by all who were associated with it. Chapters in the book which is organized chronologically, are written by past and present editors of Bookbird, by members of the board that oversees the publication of the journal, and by individuals who have been instrumental in developing and supporting Bookbird. There are interviews by the editors and an extremely useful overview also by the editors for each of the five major sections of the book. Poetry is included as are many, many photographs. One could put a face to the people who have been so essential to Bookbird's success. See gatherings of both adults and children as they celebrate reading and books and experience the wide range of countries and venues where Ibby and Bookbird representatives have been active. And if you've been a part of this, take a trip down memory lane. You will now have the opportunity to hear from the two magnificent editors. 
Valerie Coughlin is the current president of the Bookbird Inc. board and from 2005 to 2009 co-edited Bookbird. She helped found and served as president chair of IBI Ireland, of the Children's Literature Association of Ireland, and of Children's Books Ireland. Her day job was as a librarian in a teacher education college in Dublin. Evelyn Freeman is currently the president of the United States Board on Books for Young People, served on the IBI Executive Committee, and was a co-editor of Bookbird from 2001 to 2004. She is the co-author of four books on topics related to children's literature. She served as president of the Children's Literature Assembly of the National Council of Teachers of English. Her day job was as a professor and then dean and director of the Ohio State University Mansfield in the United States. In addition to how incredibly competent these two women are, Valerie and Evie have maintained their sanity and even their sense of humor while producing an exciting book during the COVID pandemic. So Val and Evie, tell us how you did it. Thank you, Joan. Valerie and I are so grateful that Joan agreed to launch Bookbird, A Flight Through Time. Joan served as president of Bookbird Inc. for 10 years during the time both Valerie and I served as Bookbird editors. Joan received the Yellow Letman Medal in 2010, quote, in acknowledgement of her magnificent contribution to IBI as president of Bookbird Inc. Board. Researching this book, Valerie and I realized what a fascinating, sometimes turbulent, and even often intriguing history Bookbird had, and how its history provided insight into the field of children's literature over Bookbird's 60 plus year span. We hope the book will be enjoyed by educators and students, librarians, authors, illustrators, publishers, historians of children's books, and anyone interested in the development of children's literature in the 20th and 21st centuries. As Joan mentioned, the book is organized chronologically into five sections with articles and images describing Bookbird, IBI, and the International Youth Library during that time period. We have so many people to thank, so Valerie and I will share the thanking. We appreciate the articles written for the book by 22 contributors in seven different countries. An international book of this nature is always a challenging experience, even in the best of times. But during a pandemic, many unforeseen issues and delays occurred. We are especially grateful and appreciative of the patience and enthusiasm of all our contributors. We want to give special thanks to Ming Xiao Zhang, IBI president, for his championing of this book project and for writing a welcome for the book. And to Hans Christian Andersen Award winner, Katherine Patterson, for writing the book's foreword. Akas Ofori Mensa, Managing Director of Sub-Saharan Publishers in Ghana, Wally D. Donker, Belgian author and past president of IBI, and Roger Mello, Brazilian author and illustrator who received the Hans Christian Andersen Award for illustration, shared wonderful commendations for the book. I send my personal thanks and appreciation to Emma Dunn, our very careful and diligent copy editor, who never seemed to complain about all the changes in our timeline. And we also want to thank Christina Moorhead at the USBBY Secretariat for preparing this pre-recorded launch video. Now Valerie will share some additional thoughts and thank yous. Thank you, Evie. And thank you, Joan, for your appreciative words about Bookbird, A Flight Through Time. And I want to add my, my words and, and also thanks to those that Evie has already thanked and to thank some others as well. While the content of the book focuses on the history of Bookbird, it also includes the story of Ibi and of the International Youth Library, 
Bookbridge was started by Ella Lepman in the Youth Library, where it was first published. So it seemed appropriate to focus too on that magnificent institution. Warm thanks are due to its director, Dr. Christiana Raba, for her support, and also many thanks to the staff of the Reading Room and the archives who helped us to source material used in the book. For her unstinting support and practical help throughout, our warmest thanks are due to Liz Page. Due to travel restrictions, it was impossible for me to get to Basel to select visual material. And Liz did amazing work in trawling through many, many boxes of photos in response to my many, many requests for pictures of Bookbird and EB personnel and events over 65 years. And also at the EB Secretariat, thanks to Nina Garda for her ongoing assistance with publicity. And thanks are due too to the EB EC for ongoing support and confidence in what we were doing. Our designer, Kira Nolan of Old Town Design Dublin, rose magnificently to the challenges we set him in designing Bookbird A Flight Through Time. As a Bookbird editor, I had worked with Kieran, so there was no need to look further for someone who would understand the nature of the book and its intended audience, and he has interpreted this beautifully. And in terms of beauty, a huge thanks to Igor Olyennikov, an Anderson Award winner, for supplying a magnificent cover which captures so well the contents of the book. Thanks also to Anastasia Arkhipova for her assistance in facilitating this, and to Sheikha Sumori for facilitating the re reproduction of a poem by Misho Mado and the accompanying illustration by Mitsumasa Anno, who were both Anderson Award winners. And last, but by no means least, our very warm thanks to, to the board of Bookbird Inc. for ongoing encouragement and support, Doris Breitmoser, Ellis Vance and Sylvia Vardell, and past members Hasmik Chehinian and Junko Yorokota, who were there at the beginning of this project. And a particular special thanks to Ellis Vance for his patience and forbearance in overseeing finances, especially when we told him that the number of pages had grown from 100 to 152. And special thanks also to Sylvia Vardell, who has used her skill as a designer to produce a striking promotional flyer for the book, as well as her work in sourcing poems by Anderson winners, which are reproduced throughout the book. Bookbird, like Ibi, began at a time of international turbulence, following the Second World War and throughout this thought has helped to keep us going when we experienced various hitches and glitches due to the current pandemic situation. Bookbird started as a means of reporting on Yella Lepman's activities promoting reading and Bookbird in countries in the developing world on EB's behalf. While it has evolved into a much more substantial publication, that is something which our journal still does. And we hope that Bookbird, a fly through time, through its words and images, will bring a sense of Bookbird's evolution, as well as enjoyment and interest to you, its readers. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie, Evie and Joan. The book can be ordered from the IBI website. Now I would like to invite Dennis Bezensov from the organising committee of the 37th IBI World Congress to update you on the current situation. Dennis. Hello, dear friends. The 37th IBI World Congress will take place from 10th till 12th of September 2021 in Moscow. Now, the situation with the pandemic around the world and in Russia is gradually stabilizing. Therefore, the decision was made to hold the Congress in a new format. 37th EB Congress will be held in a hybrid format, combining online and offline presents. 
The guests coming from the countries which borders will be open and where the air traffic will be restored will be able to go to Russia in person. The rest of the participants could join the event online via their personal accounts. All our program elements, namely plenary sessions, breakout sessions, poster sessions, virtual exhibitions, Ibi Asahi and I read ceremonies, and Anderson Award, as well as the opening and closing ceremonies of the Congress will be held in a special virtual slots. That is, you can choose a hall that is necessary for you and as if you were offline to visit this hall from your personal computer. Due to the change of the format, the EB World Congress, two new venues were, were selected for holding the events. Firstly, this is Digital Business Space, a wonderful modern platform in the city center on the basis of which the entire scientific program and the main program of the Congress will be held. Secondly, this is Pashkov House, Pashkov Dom, a historical building located close to the Kremlin where it is planned to hold the Hans Christian Andersen Award Ceremony. Due to the change of the format, we have revised the system of participants' fees. We have provided flexible system for different categories of countries. We took EB country divisions as the basis. There are eight categories of paying capacity. The countries from the first to the fourth category pay a fee of 400 euro for offline participation, 200 euro for the online format. The countries from the fifth till seventh categories will pay 200 euro for offline format and 100 euro for online format. The eighth category takes part free of charge. In addition, and this is an important point, there is an opportunity to connect online not only for one person using one account and one fee paid, but an entire organization as well. Oral sessions, Hans Christensen Anderson Award, Asahi and I read ceremonies, opening and closing of the Congress will be translated into four languages, English, Spanish, Chinese and Russian. The plenary sessions of the three Congress days will be also translated into Arabic. During the Congress dates, Moscow International Book Fair will take place in the capital. This is a great event in the field of book publishing and book distribution. In the framework of this event on September the 9th, a special program will be held there organized for Congress delegates. On May the 1st, 2021, new hotel proposals were posted on the Congress website as the main Congress venue has been changed. Participants of the Congress can choose a hotel or at their own discretion if the only proposed by us do not suit them for any reason. We confirm our readiness to provide, if necessary, visa support and assistance in drawing up a flight route taking into account existing restrictions. Traveling across country is unforgettable and safe. Our colleagues from other regions of Russia have prepared interesting cultural and professional tours from Vladimir to Suzdal and to Yakutia and Buratia. You can check the program dates and prices on the Congress official website. So, dear friends, welcome to Russia in September 2021. Thanks, Dennis. It's very exciting to hear about all the events that will take place. The next segment is about other international IBI activities and projects. The IBI Children in Crisis Fund provides support for children whose lives have been disrupted through war, civil disorder or natural disaster. The two main activities that are supported by the fund are the therapeutic use of books and storytelling in the form of bibliotherapy and the creation or replacement of collections or selected books that are appropriate to the situation. The children in Gaza should be able to be in their libraries and in school, enjoying a safe and dignified life. However, not only has this COVID virus ravaged much of the society there, the recent unset unrest has made life even more insecure for the people of Gaza. Our libraries are meant to be places of support and healing. Although they are still standing, they are badly damaged. And we are again appealing for funds to restore the libraries to be the safe haven that all these children deserve. Please visit the web, any website to you make your donation. 
The enormous warehouse explosion on 4th of August in Beirut caused catastrophic throughout the city, affecting schools and libraries. Bibi Lebanon, with its years of experience in helping traumatised children and rebuilding libraries, are working with local schools to help build, rebuild their libraries. These are some of the images of the fantastic work they have done so far. We would like to thank all of those who have donated time, money and books. The Ibi Select section based in Kabul, Afghanistan, is working tirelessly to give children a chance for a better life and Ibi has supported various projects in Afghanistan for many years. The 2021 project is aimed at promoting reading amongst children in the IDP camps in Kabul. The children in these camps are often returnees and refugees and they live in informal settlements and in tents. They have no proper system of education for the children, either in formal or informal forms, and consequently they are exposed to all types of risk. And children often work in the streets to support their families. Ibi is also supporting Reformer, which is an affiliate of the American Library Association and their project to bring books to the refugee children caught on the border between Mexico and the USA. The El Salvador Library of Dreams is an Ibi library and the home of the Interna Ibi National Section of El Salvador. The Library of Dreams is cr created in one of the neighbourhoods where people live immersed in a climate of insecurity. But because of the pandemic, the library has had to close and the market reading activities had to stop. Nonetheless, the founder of the library, Jorge Okuta, set up a library in his hometown of Santo Domingo, which is still open to small groups of children and staffed by young volunteers. The Ibi Yamada programme supports around 10 grassroots projects every year. The 2021 programme includes Ibi Yamada projects organised and run by the national sections in 11 countries. Argentina, Armenia, Cameroon, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Ghana, Italy, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Ukraine and Zimbabwe. A further grant is awarded for the Latin American and Caribbean Regional Meeting at the end of September. Other international programmes and activities of IBI can be discovered on the IBI website. Here are just a few. The IBI Honour List. The 2020 selection included 179 nominations in 48 different languages from 60 countries. The titles are selected by IBI members in the country, making this a unique list. International Children's Book Day 2021 was sponsored by USBBY. Silent Books Final Destination Lampedusa. These are world list picture books to bring joy to children from everywhere, especially those arriving as migrants or refugees. And the SDG Book Club recommends book, children's books that highlight the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the UN in an endeavour to mobilise efforts around the world to end all sort of forms of poverty, fight inequalities and tackle climate change. The Ibi Awards have also been victims to the global pandemic in that we have not been able to celebrate any of the winners. But I'd just like to remind you of our outstanding 2020 winners of the Ibi Asaki Reading Promotion Award and the Ibi I Read Outstanding Reading Promoter Award. The 2022 winners will be announced next year at the Bologna Children's Book Fair on 21st of March 2022. The Hans Christian Andersen Award is the highest international distinction given to authors and illustrators of children's books. Given every other year by IBI, the Andersen Awards recognise lifelong achievement and are given to an author and an illustrator whose complete works have made an important and lasting contribution to children's literature. The 2020 awards were given to Jacqueline Woodson for the quality of her writing and to Albertine for her fabulous artwork for children. They will be celebrated at the 37th IBI World Congress in Moscow in September. The candidates for the 2022 awards are currently being assessed by the jury. These are shown here, 10 experts from 10 different countries and cultures and led by jury president Yonko Yokota. And these are the 64 candidates for the 2022 Hans Christian Andersen Award. The shortlist will be announced in January 2022 and the winners will be announced at the Bologna Children's Book Fair on 21st of March 2022. Even though sadly no international guests were able to travel to the beautiful tear-shaped island on the Han River, Nami Island, we'd like to show you a short film of the 2021 Nam Book Festival.
We would like to warmly thank NAMI Island Inc. for their generous and continuing sponsorship of the Han Ibi Hans Christian Andersen Awards, as well as their, for their innovative and hard work on producing the 10 beautiful scarves for the Ibi fundraising project. The 10 scarves were designed by Hans Christian Andersen Award winners who donated their designs for the project, and I'd like to warmly thank them once again for their support. If you've not yet bought your scarf, there are still many designs available. Just look at these. You can order your scarf from the IBI website. Meanwhile, the IBI regional conferences have also been affected by our inability to travel anywhere. But we do have two fixed dates. Latin America and the Caribbean is going to be online 28th of September to the 1st of October 2021 and the IBI regional conference on 4th to the 6th of March 2022 in Nashville, Tennessee, in person we hope. As we saw earlier, the 37th IBI World Congress will be this year after being postponed from 2020. And now we are proud to have news of the 2024 and the 2026 IBI World Congresses. The, 30, the 39th IBI World Congress will be held in Trieste, Italy in 2024. IBI Italy will give more details to show you and a film later today at 4 p.m. in Italian and 4.30 p.m. in English as part of the online edition of the Bologna Children's Book Fair. Please join them if you can. The 40th IBI World Congress has been awarded to IBI Canada in Ottawa. Finally, we look forward to 2022 and the 38th IBI World Congress in Putrajaya, Malaysia.
thank you, Reza, and thank all the Ibi National Section of Malaysia, and we shall be there. Thank you for all for attending this online press conference. For more information about any of our activities and projects, please visit the IBI website at www.ibi.org or write to Nina or me at the IBI Secretariat. We look forward to really, really meeting you next March at the Bologna Children's Book Fair, 21st to 24th of March. Until then, stay well and stay safe and keep walking, working towards bringing books to children everywhere. Thank you. <laughs>